Brian, you and I have dealt in different ways with the multiverse. I've been much more on the full philosophical side. You've been on the experimentalist side, very deeply involved. But let's take both of us take a step back and ask what multiverses would mean in the biggest sense of the term. And we have meaning in different categories, meaning for physics, uh, meaning for cosmology, for philosophy, even theology. So let's just go through the list. Uh, for physics, I mean, the argument is that if there's a real multiverse and there are different universes created by different, by inflationary theory or colliding brains or some other way of having different uh, uh, characterizations of physical reality, that they may have different physical constants. So physics may be different, right? That's right, yeah. And you'd have different uh, energy levels for the vacuum, which could cause different properties of those physical constants and interactions. There might be more forces of nature, fewer. I mean, don't forget, if we had this conversation 100 years ago, we wouldn't know about, you know, three of the, you know, <laughs> two of the three of the fundamental forces of right. nature, right? right. So um, that's right. So we should never underestimate our ignorance of what will come by future clever experimentalists, right? Mm. Uh, and observations that come from serendipity. The problem is that all the low-lying fruit is getting picked. <laughs> the tree is barren until the maybe the very top, but maybe there's nothing up there. Hmm. Maybe there's no high-hanging fruit left to pick. <laughs> um, and so is it dangerous? As, as Paul Steinhardt has said, the multiverse is dangerous not just to science, but to society. Now, Paul's a friend of mine. <laughs> Do I agree with that statement? How, in what sense can it, can it denigrate? And I know what he's saying. He's, a, he's saying it in the strict Popperian sense of the, of the term, that science should be falsifiable and that the multiverse is unfalsifiable intrinsically because you could have a variety of different physical origin states of the universe that mm -hmm. lead to the observ observation that we have, and therefore there's not a one-to-one -one injection of And there's um, no way theory. to falsify something that, you, that has no characteristics to falsify. Right, but if I tell you I'm a Virgo, and, and you say, oh, tomorrow you know, you're going to win the lottery, and I don't win the lottery, you falsified it, so is astrology yeah. uh, now yeah. part of the falsified scientific right. method? Of course not, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not saying that conjecturing that the multiverse can have harm. Now, where does it have harm? Uh, ultimately, I think it has the most harm in the sociology of science. That's very hard to get uh, to, to work on alternatives to cosmology. I mean, you and I can talk about the five different alternatives to inflation. And remember, inflation is, is a misnomer. There's really at least a thousand different <laughs> models of inflation. Right. And each one has a cosmologist right. standing behind right. you know, her, his or her favorite theory, right? But there's literally five, maybe five alternatives. And most of those are considered, you know, some of those are considered fringe, you know, by, by alternatives. Some are considered um, uh, no better than inflation. Here, here's, here's, here's one reason that I've had trouble with alternatives to inflation, even though I think it's exciting and important to think about them. And what should a good alternative to a model have? Well, let's just cut away all the nonsense. What they most object to is the multiverse, right? So it shouldn't have a multiverse. So none of these alternatives have a multiverse, at least in the classic sense of parallel universes right now. They do have multiverses in time, Temporal. right? They have yeah. temporal cyclic, but let's ignore that. What is the element that causes inflation at its core to occur? It's called a scalar field. It's called the inflaton. You'd like, ideally, your quantum alternative to inflation to have no scalar field, right? Because that is the sine qua non of inflation. Well, guess what? All these models have, have it. And I'm not, look, I'm just a simple experimentalist. I'm not able to come up with these models. But all the alternatives have some unknown, um, <laughs> uh, as yet, no better than the inflaton mm -hmm. component, whether mm -hmm. it's a scalar tracking field, whether it's Sir Roger Penrose's Erebons, if I'm a dark matter that evolves and the decays. Um, there's no evidence for any of those. So is it improvement? It gets rid of the multiverse, but at what cost? And mm. I think the most intellectually satisfying would be something that doesn't have an unknown scalar field. Or maybe that scalar field is the Higgs, and then, okay, we know it, and it connects to it. But as yet, those attempts at synthesis have been unsuccessful. What are implications of the, of, of the multiverse for philosophy or theology? I think there's a lot. With philosophy, it's, it's been used in some sense to kind of provide a mechanism by which the anthropic principle is instantiated, that life is bound to occur given an infinite number of constants. Now, some people agree and argue, rather, that uh, the universe isn't so finely tuned. Fred Adams, um, for example, has argued that the universe is very, you know, loose tuned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and so you're kind of using gloves on the radio knob, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but, uh, but, in, but in reality, he's restricting his attention to a very 
narrow subset of what he calls the base level, the sine qua non for us to be asking an anthropic question, which is the formation of stars. Right. So if you right. restrict, now what if you layer in every single physical constant or every single property that makes life livable on earth? Mm. After all, we only know of life on earth. We don't know yeah. a single bit of evidence for life. Any other statement to the contrary is a faith-based statement. Mm. People say, I believe there's life. I don't believe in gravity. Mm. I know gravity exists. I have evidence for gravity. I don't have to believe in it. So belief is a faith-based question. So theologically, I think there are people, so it was so funny, when the bicep result was announced, March 17, 2014, mm -hmm. at Harvard, <laughs> Nobel Prizes galore mm -hmm. for everybody, but there were arguments from people on the theological sense, this proves God exists because it was concomitant with inflation, which looks a lot like a singularity mm -hmm. of the universe. And then there were opponents like Lawrence Krauss uh, and, and Max Tegmark, who said, you know, goodbye universe, hello multiverse. Mm -hmm. So it's maybe and therefore you don't need God at all because you you have you know you can explain the fine tuning of our universe because you can explain everything and we're here with the anthropic principle. That's Very right. Simple. So it can, it can either depending on your lens, it can either prove God's existence <laughs> or make God utterly irrelevant. <laughs> right. And it shows kind of the interest in it and the excitement of it, and that's why we're so passionately pursuing it with instruments like the Simons Observatory.